all right let's look at some questions related to networking so we'll first look at option a is is deploy public NAT gateways within the same private subnets as the ec2 instances so we know that NAT gateways cannot be placed in a private subnet in sync correct choice let's now move to option uh, b and d together in both option b and d there is a mention of private NAT gateways so we know there is no such thing as a private NAT gateway so these are just distractors let's remove this we are left out with option c and option c says deploy public NAT gateways in public subnet within the same vpc as the ec2 instance so NAT gateways must be in public subnets always to provide internet access to instances in private subnet so that being said option c is the right answer all righty so let's look at this we'll look at option a e. e is set up a table in amazon athena for aws cloud trail logs create a query to extract the relevant information so as usual you can reduce a solution architect exam just like a cloud practitioner just by focusing on some specific words just like how i've marked in this uh, blue so it will help you to make the exam more simpler and uh, it will save you time so if you look at option a where it mentions aws cloud trail so cloud trail logs are for api calls and cannot provide the necessary details for analyzing traffic patterns as um, uh, required by the question we'll reject this let's move to option b b says enable alb that is application load balancer access logging to amazon s3 create table in amazon athena and query the logs so this solution if you look provides an efficient way to analyze access logs using athena which allows for querying large data sets stored in s3 without the need for additional infrastructure looks good we'll park this we'll now move to option c c says enable alb access logging to amazon s3 manually open each file in a text editor and search for the relevant information so manually searching through log files is time consuming and inefficient we know uh, we should reduce uh, manual processes as manual processes may also prone to errors human errors let's reject this we'll move to option d this is utilize amazon emr on a dedicated amazon ec2 instance to directly query the alb for traffic access log information so this solution involves more operational overhead and complexity compared to using athena for querying logs which is option b since option um, b is better than option d we'll eliminate option d and lock option b as the right answer okay so let's look at this question now we'll look at option a first a says modify the script to identify the instance with the fewest active connection and read from that instance to generate the report so this approach adds complexity and does not guarantee consistent performance improvement instance correct let's move to option b b says create a read replica of the database and configure the script to query only the read replica for the new patient records so this solution offloads the read operation uh, to read replica reducing the load on the primary database and improving application performance with minimal operational overhead that is what required by the equation as well let's park this we'll move to option c c says instruct the it team to manually export the new patient records from the database at the end of the each day so again like manual processes we need to avoid, uh, avoid right because uh, manual processes are prone to human errors and can increase operational overhead also so we'll reject option c let's move to option d d says implement amazon elastic cache to cache the common queries that the script runs against the database so while caching can improve performance while caching will add complexity and may not be as cost effective as using a read replica for this specific use case so option b is definitely better than option d we'll reject option d and uh, lock option b as the correct answer Alrighty, so now let's tackle this question 
it will test your concepts on networking we'll look at option e e says configure an application load balancer with the required protocol and ports for the internet gateway specify the ec2 instance as the targets so if we focus on this application load balancer we know application load balancers are optimized for http and https traffic not for handling millions of udp request therefore incorrect let's move to option b b says configure a gateway load balancer for the internet traffic specify the ec2 instance as the targets so gateway load balancers are used for deploying scaling and managing third party virtual appliance but cannot handle again high volume of udp traffic so wrong answer we'll move to option c c says configure a network load balancer so network load balancers we know are designed to handle millions of requests per second while maintaining ultra low latency that is what required by the equation as well if you look here let's park this we'll uh, move to option d option d says launch an identical set of trading servers on ec2 instance in separate aws region route internet traffic to both sets of ec2 instance so this solution increases complexity and cost without addressing the need for a load balancer optimized for udp traffic let's uh, discard this option quick tip for the exam whenever you see keywords like udp or tcp then think about network load balancer why because if we look at the uh, um, official documentation or the blog uh, for uh, it it mentions here the network load balancer is designed to handle tens of mil uh, millions of requests per second while maintaining high throughput at ultra low latency this is the keyword ultra low latency and here is the diagrammatic view of it network load balancer nlb tcp tls udp so whenever you see this kind of keywords think about network load balancer so we will lock option c in the interest of time let's bring the heat to the snow it's all about periodically backing up small amounts of data to s3 let's look at option e first e says configure aws glue so aws glue we know is used for extract transform and load also known as etl operation and not for copying data as required by the equation so incorrect let's move to option b b says deploy an aws data sync agent on the on-premises server and synchronize the data to amazon s3 so aws data sync is designed for efficient automated and cost effective data transfer between on-premises storage and aws making it ideal for periodic backup let's park this option we'll move to option c c says set up an sftp sync using aws transfer for sftp to transfer data from on-premises to amazon s3 so aws uh, transfer for sftp is suited for secure file transfer rather than automated periodic backups as required by the equation so wrong answer let's move to option d d says stabilize an aws direct connect connection between the on-premises data center and a vpc and transfer the data to s3 aws direct connect is um, we know a dedicated uh, network connection and may be overkill for a small periodic backup which will lead to higher cost if we, we use direct connect for such use cases so we'll reject this option we'll lock option b as the correct answer all right now so let's look at um, this question so this should be easy if we first focus on option a and d option a and d both uses aws web application firewall also known as waf so web application firewall does not provide the same level of ddos protection and audit capabilities as aws shield advanced so let's reject this now let's move to option b option b says subscribe to amazon inspector engage the aws ddos response team drt to integrate mitigating controls into the service so inspector we know is primarily used for uh, security assessment and vulnerability management not for um, ddos attacks or ddos uh, protection therefore wrong answer we are left out with option c and option c if we look looks good because we know um, aws uh, shield advanced provides ddos protection and includes access to the ddos response team also known as the drt 
for assistance along with detailed attack diagnostic and an audit trail looks good quick tip for the exam whenever you see keywords like ddos attack then think about ew shield and you should get your answer so option c is the correct answer all right now we need to select two correct answers for this we'll look at option a and b together between option a and b we got to choose a better option so if we look uh, for option a, b that is application load balancer we know application load balancer uses http or https protocol whereas option a that is network load balancers use tcp or uh, udp protocol hence we'll keep option a and reject option b we saw this in official documentation few moments back as well well uh, now look at option c c says uh, set up an aws global accelerator to route traffic to the load balancers in each region so aws global accelerator provides high ability and low latency by routing traffic to the optimal aws endpoint looks good because that's what um, we need because um, it's for users worldwide right let's look at option d d says use amazon route 53 with a geolocation routing policy to direct the traffic route 53 cannot meet the requirement of um, high ability and low latency worldwide as per the question so let uh, wrong answer will lock option a and c as the combination of two correct actions for this all right now so it's all about performance right so let's look at option a you see configure the application to use amazon elastic cache to minimize the number of requests sent to the micro services elastic cache helps with caching but does not provide observability for identifying performance issues as um, um, required by the question here we will reject this let's move to option b b says set up amazon cloud watch container insights to gather metrics for the eks cluster use aws x-ray to trace the request between the microservices so this solution provides comprehensive observability by collecting metrics and tracing request helping to identify performance issues effectively that's what we require as per the question as well looks good let's park this let's move to option c c says use aws cloud trail to monitor the api calls create an amazon quick sight dashboard to visualize the microservice interaction cloud trail is used for auditing api calls not for detailed observability and um, performance monitoring what required by the question let's reject this let's move now move to option d this is utilize aws trusted advisor to gain insights into the application performance so we know trusted advisor is like a kind of um, personal assistant which provides uh, best practice recommendations but again it does not provide um, or uh, offer detailed observability for microservices what required by the question let's reject this we'll lock option b as the right answer all righty so interesting question again with a uh, lowest possible latency and making it high available uh, or highly available we'll look at option a first is is set up an alb to enable sticky sessions also in session affinity for accessing the catalog in amazon aurora so sticky sessions help with session persistence but does not address the need for caching and high ability of uh, shopping cart data what um, required by the question therefore incorrect choice now let's move to option b b says use amazon elastic cache for redis to cache analog uh, to so to cache catalog data from amazon dynamo db and shopping cart data from user sessions so elastic cache for redis provides first of all the uh, low latency what's required by the question secondly it also provides a uh, high ability for session data ensuring that shopping cart data is preserved even if the user disconnects and reconnects this can be the potential answer let's move to option c c c is implement amazon open search service to cache catalog data from Di amazon dynamo db and shopping cart data from uh, um, from user sessions 
so open search is a designed for search and analytics not for caching uh, session data what's required by the uh, question um, currently we'll reject this we'll move to option d this is deploy an amazon ec2 instance with the amazon ebs storage for the catalog and shopping cart um, uh, automated snapshots so this solution does not provide low latency and high ability required for session data so this will not solve our problem we'll reject this we'll lock option b as the right answer this looks like a brainstorming question this time we need to enhance its throughput uh, we need to select two correct answers as well so let's uh, look at option a first a says utilize the s3 bucket access point instead of directly accessing the s3 bucket so this does not improve upload or download throughput as um, required by the uh, question if we read instant correct let's move to option b b says distribute the files across multiple s3 buckets so if we do this it will add complexity without improving the throughput our end goal is to enhance um, the throughput or improve the throughput right as per the question because it is the keyword so wrong answer we will look at option c now it says implement s3 multi-part upload so using s3 multi-part upload allows to upload large files in parts which can be done in parallel improving upload throughput that being said it is one of the correct answer now let's move to option d d says retrieve multiple byte ranges of an object in parallel so retrieving multiple byte ranges of an object in parallel allows to download different parts of the object simultaneously increasing download throughput looks good this is another right answer so we got our two correct answers that is option c and d are the right answers for this question so if you want the questions entire on your fingertips including keyword tricks please enroll in diamond membership or above by clicking the join button now then connect and inbox me on linkedin at the rate of cloud guru amit or instagram at the rate of amit physique i'll be glad to help you out with the pdf access so please 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 don't go away let's meet in the next part of the series